Angela, and this is Homeschool Unrefined. We created this podcast to change the conversation about homeschool. This is a place where we encourage each other to do less, be ourselves, embrace natural learning, and keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. We live two miles from each other in Minnesota, and we've been friends over 20 years. Our kids are between the ages of 9 and 15, and we've been homeschooling a combined total of 19 years. We are an inclusive and non-sectarian podcast and community. We believe Black Lives Matter and affirm LGBTQ plus families. While this podcast is not focused on these topics, these beliefs inform our work and are woven into everything we do. We hope this is a place where we can all learn and grow together. This is episode 141, Loose Planning, Curriculum, Books, and Routines. And we are going to get to that in just a minute, but I wanted to say hi to Angela. Hi, Angela. Hi. Glad to be back here again today. And I wanted to dive into a question for you to start off off our episode. Um, So we have this Patreon community that supports our podcast, um, and we've really become a community. We have a group on Facebook. Um, and I ask lots of good questions in there. You do. <laughs> and I wanted to pose a, one of those questions to you today, just All right. for fun. So I, I asked last week, um, something that we talk, you and I actually talk a lot about on our podcast. Um, what's something you don't do? And we've, we, I know we talk about this a lot, Angela, but, um, maybe we haven't talked about it for a while. <laughs> actually, I don't think we've had an episode, what we don't do episode for a while. If you've been around a while, you know we've done, I don't know, three or so Mm -hmm. more of these episodes. And I don't know that we've done one in maybe a year. So it's a good time to bring it up. And I just have to say, it's I feel like it's a really important thing to talk about. (laughs) Especially among homeschoolers. Yes, we talk a lot about what we do. Yeah. (laughs) What we do do. (laughs) <laughs> but we don't always talk about what we don't do. And I think it's it's just as important Yeah, um, yeah. to take some stuff off of your yeah, plate. Especially in this episode today where you're going to hear all the things that we do do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, it is important to say what we don't do. I will start um, because I, uh, I'm thinking about fall. Yes. Thinking about planning. Thinking about, um, you know, the more academic-y side of mm. school for us. And one thing we don't do, what I don't do, is I don't worry about science or social studies before high school. Um, I, wow, that's bold. I don't, I, okay, I'll tell you why. I feel like um, in, when you get to ninth grade, mm-hmm. generally, all of the science and social studies that's important to know yeah. is covered in, in those times. Right. And so I am not worried for my kids who are K-8. Mm-hmm. I am not worried about what we are covering or not covering. I'm not thinking about like, oh, what do I need to do for fifth grade science or seventh grade social studies or something? Um, that's not to say I don't do it and I don't, spr- I, I'm more of a sprinkler. I sprinkle things in yes. here and there. I think it's important to discover some things, but it, when I'm thinking about planning or buying curriculum or, you know, I don't know, uh, what, yeah. what's most important, I'm not Sitting thinking into about, day. yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not thinking about those at all. I love that um, because I feel like so much science, um, and what was the other thing that you said, science? Social and- studies. I was thinking specifically science, but I guess, yes, okay. for sure, social social studies too. So much of it just happens in our, like the natural, they're living, you know, especially mm-hmm. when our kids are young, they're just, mm-hmm. they're always discovering things scientifically yeah. <laughs> yeah. everywhere they go. Yeah. And I have to say like, this is not because those two subjects are not important to me. They actually mm, are I know really they are. important to me. You're they're a science really... teacher. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you got your <laughs> master's degree in science. Yeah. Education. <laughs> so, and, and history and learning mm-hmm. about current events, that stuff is so important to me. In fact, I would say those two subjects take a prominent place in our homeschool mm. just because they're sprinkled in so much throughout our conversations, but I'm not, I don't want to ruin it mm-hmm. with a curriculum or a plan or, yeah. a, uh, you know, like a have to something I feel like I have to get to. Right. And so, um, for science, we do a lot of 
And, and I don't even call it science. My kids would yeah. think they don't do science. Right. That's right, what right. my kids think. They think we don't do science. But um, what I'm doing for it in my own mind is a lot of like experiments, daily life experiments, yes. like cooking is a perfect science experiment. You're trying something out, seeing if it works. What could you do differently next time? Trying it again a different way. That's a perfect science, scientific method. Um, we're doing a lot of getting in nature oh um, gosh, yes. for, for social study. So I'm like letting them explore on their own and learn to like it and love it. And then um, for social so studies, I would say it's a lot of current events talk. Well, I don't, I don't want to say a lot. I mean, as they've gotten older, more current events talk. Um, and then a lot of learning history through reading or books or documentaries or um, different television programs. Um, we're doing it, um, yeah. but I'm not concerned about the content. Yeah, or, that's so good. Yeah. So. Yeah, and they're learning <laughs> just as much as and probably, I mean, or probably, probably more that way than any other way. So I think that's amazing. That's great. Yeah. So yeah. great. How about you, Myron? What don't you do? <coughs> okay, sorry. Um, so uh, I went a different direction in this, and what okay. I what I don't do is a lot of there's a, there are a few chores around our house that I've just like mm. stopped. I don't do anymore because <laughs> <laughs> let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So I don't um, I don't clean out the dishwasher. Mm. I just don't like doing it. I've never enjoyed it, and I have four capable children who so you personally <laughs> never empty the dishwasher. i don't yeah i don't want to say i never do it this is i would never say that <laughs> but it's not my regular job it's not yeah. my regular job to do this so it's somebody else's regular job they rotate they do it every day nice. without me normally I, my youngest i often do things i do do it with her i'll do the things that go up high or whatever but mm-hmm it's just, it's not my responsibility to always clean out the dishwasher. Nice. Oh, I know. And just, you- I, I know just taking that off my, off of my plate, uh, it's just makes me a happier person. Yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of other things, but I don't do that. Well, normally. I feel like emptying the dishwasher is for some reason, and maybe it's just me, but I feel like other people are similar, like kind of the most hated, one of the most hated so? chores. Maybe that's true. Yeah. And I, I hate doing it, but when I've like timed myself, it takes five minutes. I, I mean, know. it's not, <laughs> so I always wonder why I hate it so much. I think but just I because do. it's the same every day for me, it's oh. monotonous. It's, I just, it's, there's nothing interesting about it for me. It's just the same <laughs> okay. thing. Yes. So I don't know, but even just doing it, even, um, when I'm helping a child do it, it's more interesting. It's mm, more fun okay. to do it together. Okay. And then it feels like I'm helping them out mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> rather than like, I need somebody to help me do this. So that, you know, mm. like them doing me a favor by doing mm-hmm. it. No, it's their responsibility. And then I can, you know, choose to help them. And then it becomes like this, you know, can become, you know, a shared um, yeah. experience together. But yeah, that's um, awesome. And then the other thing that I've taken off my plate and I've actually gotten this from you is laundry. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. I really don't do uh, my kids laundry. I, um, I help out. I also do, I do, I help out sometimes, um, by, you know, throwing something from the washing machine into the dryer for somebody or whatever, or I help fold some kids clothes. (laughs) Again, my youngest is just, it's those kind of tasks are tough for her. It's always been, but even it's interesting because when my oldest was that age, she was like super independent, but you know, so like yeah. every child is so different. So, yeah. um, you know, and I'm, it's, which is totally fine. So, but it's just not, I just, it's not my, the thing I'm always doing every day is not, mm-hmm. I am not doing laundry all the time. If I, if I hadn't, um, given that to my kids, I would uh, <laughs> be doing laundry all, all the, the yeah. time and I just yeah. don't, I want to do it. <laughs> It is so nice to free up that brain space. I feel like um, laundry is probably a lot of people's most hated chore. I don't know. (laughs) Because (laughs) it's so continual. Like it never ends. You can't finish it. It's never ending. You're right. It's so true. And even now when I I don't do that for my kids, I still need to take care of mine. And Mm -hmm. usually my husband's or we'll, you know, we do ours together or whatever. And then also just like all the towels. 
I'll mm-hmm. wash clothes. I'll, you know, there's always extra things to wash. Yeah. So, you know. I mean, I feel like because my kids do their own laundry and Jeremy and I share, mm-hmm. if I d- didn't do it for like two weeks, it would still keep go- getting yes, done. Yes. Which is so nice. Like, I don't have to worry exactly. about doing and it. And I know you and I have talked about this before. And I love this is, I feel like one huge benefit of homeschooling is that, um, you know, if our kids, our kids really have learned to take responsibility for washing their clothes because yeah. I don't remind them anymore. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I don't remind them. And like the worst consequence is they don't have, you know, clean clothes, but they really, you know, they're not going to school. They don't have to have a specific yeah. thing that they have to wear that day. So for me, it's like no, no cost mm-hmm. <laughs> benefit. <laughs> they yeah, learn yeah. and, but mm-hmm. it's like a cost to them. They don't like that. Mm-hmm. So they're like, they really keep, they really keep up. Yeah. with their laundry because they want their clothes i don't care that much if they have <laughs> clean clothes or not. right <laughs> right and for my kids like putting on something dirty is probably fine like I'm we can find something it. cleanish dirty yeah to wear if exactly. we had to go somewhere <laughs> right exactly <laughs> this is so true yes all right thanks for that question Marin. yeah patreon is a place where we have lots more content uh, more episodes and a community of people for just five dollars a month so if you're interested in that you can go to patreon.com slash homeschool unrefined mm-hmm. all right so our topic today is planning i mean this is our time loose planning um <laughs> we're going to talk about curriculum books and routines um in no particular order really um because we because it's loose planning <laughs> <laughs> we do this yeah, planning. and and you know um just you know a few i mean i'm we might have disclaimers throughout this but um <laughs> several <laughs> <maybe>. disclaimer <laughs> um this is these are my loose plans these are my loose fall plans i know that if you ask me in the spring what i'm still doing you know some of it i might still be doing yeah. I'm, I'm probably switching things up a lot well and the great thing about loose planning for me is that it's um it's so loose for me that I could be doing the same thing all year mm. you know you know what I mean yeah. it's like not, it's it's all tangible it's all um doable mm-hmm. um and it's not super lofty you know yep. it's loose and flexible for me yeah and this is yeah. just this how great. I roll and I think you do too yeah, and I think you'll see if you're new to our podcast and you don't know us that well, or if you know us well, um, you will see our personalities come out in these plans because, <laughs> um, you know, I am more of a planner probably than yep. you, Marin. Yep. Um, I am more detailed than you. Yes. So um, you'll notice that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, for sure, for sure. And also, like, I think it's important for me to say, you know, my kids are, uh, you know, my kids are 11, 13, and 15, and my 15-year-old is doing um, distance learning. So I'm not even going to talk about her today sure. really that much. I'm going to talk about her a teeny bit, but so mostly I'm talking about my 11 and 13-year-olds who are 6th and 8th grade. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. and they're, you know things have changed as they've gotten older. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so you are going to notice that as well. If you had talked to me five years ago, our plans would look a lot different, <laughs> obviously. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yep. So, And my kids, again, as a reminder, are 13, 11, 11, and 9. Um, <clears throat> so, it, you know, our, yours, your and my plans, some of them might, you know, might look similar, but then, you know, some might not too Mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. by the age of our kids and um okay so why don't we start out with maybe just some routines do you want to start by telling us just I know that we we really like talking about routines um it's good structure for both of our days um Mm -hmm. it feels good to have a routine um so yeah okay and um I have to say like if you listen to our back to school summit we talked about routines a lot there too Mm -hmm. um how we like to you know keep it loose and so that things can change and be flexible. And I'm trying to do that um, with, you know, I'm trying to do that. Also, my kids, my two kids who are home and homeschooling are very, um, you know, concrete. And they oh, like sure. have told me that they mm-hmm. want more structure mm. than I am 
than I'm comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. Um, they want more independence and structure. Both sure. of those two things. And I like doing like family group activities in kind of a loose setting. And they are um, wanting to do things on their own and be independent. And they are wanting, my, my 11 year old told me he wants, he wants a schedule with minutes written down. <laughs> wow. And I was like, oh gosh. Uh. So um, I'm trying th- some of those things this year and it's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm, you know, I'm trying to work with sure. everybody's personality. So um, in general, I would say we do more of our academic work in the morning mm-hmm. and then more of our creative work in the afternoon. Okay. Um, because I think the academic work is, you know, uh least exciting sure and we need to be freshest to mm-hmm, do it mm-hmm. and so uh morning is best if i don't do that in the morning it doesn't happen in the afternoon <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so and my kids seem to like that too is my two who are who are homeschooling really like i said they want to get the stuff they want to get stuff done early they want to um move on check things mm-hmm, off their list mm-hmm. that are important and move on so yeah sure so that's generally how our routine is structured. Yeah. Um, I would say also the other po- important thing that's different this year, well, we started at midway of last year, is my kids' stuff is separate. Um, mm-hmm. I would prefer that we were together as a family doing all these fun things, <laughs> um, but they yes. want to be separate and independent and doing their own things. Um, I grieved that for a while, Ugh. and now I'm just embracing it. It's it's fine. Um but I am, so they're doing, like, they have separate schedules, separate tasks, separate, um, you know, I don't even want to call it curriculum, plans for different mm-hmm. subjects. Mm-hmm. Um, but the things that we do together, so there are a few things we do together, and one of them is we do deer time every day yeah, in the afternoon at about two or three. And I even, That's my smart. oldest comes in for that. Um, Good. Yeah. And then... Um, we once a week we're watching a documentary of mom's choice that i hope my oldest will join us for too as well um and then we do our we do a weekly nature walk with martin's family Mm -hmm. where my oldest comes to so those are about the only things we're actually doing together Mm -hmm. as a family Mm -hmm. yeah okay so our routine looks I mean, is is similar in some ways where I, I really like to do, uh, you know, any of the have to items, usually I front end that at the beginning of the day mm-hmm. for the same reason. I just think it's easier, um, it's easier to get them done when you have enough energy. Uh, but I, I have to say, so our routine is often, so I kind of, we started the year <laughs> talking about how I would really love to have a time. Um, like between nine and one is kind of like our chunk of like focused, um, kind of check things off our list time, but also, and this is just, this could also just be, you know, our family's personality. There really needs to be spaces in between the have to things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, you know, a list of things that each kid should get done. Um, but also, they're all doing this differently. Some of them are getting it done like all right away. I have some kids who want a weekly plan. Mm. So they're like, "These just tell me what I have to do for the week. Mm. And I'll decide when in the week I want to get it done. Yeah. And then um, I have one, at least one child who has said, I want daily plans because I just want to, I want to know what to do, to do each day. Mm -hmm. And, but I have to say it's, it's definitely like, um, it's a group effort to come up with these plans too. It's not just me deciding everything and putting it on their list. Like we talk about what, what is manageable for you? Like how many math lessons are like, is a good fit for you. And Mm -hmm. it's not just their decision. It's not just my decision, but it's like really a good conversation yeah. that we've had with every every child like what's a good like life-giving amount of work for you to do yeah. um and so we've done that we're doing that differently for each kid so um and then in between like I said and then in between each like kind of uh to-do item I feel like our kids really appreciate doing other things and this yeah. is all it's all part of homeschool so I don't feel like just because you know it can very easily feel like 
because it's not on our list of have to items, it's, it can feel like it's less important, but I'm really trying to give value to these other things that are happening in between, you know, the mark off items. So, and those are things that I I have on my whiteboard and I talked about them in, um, Patreon this last week. So if you're, if you're on Patreon, you've heard these things before, but, um, they're like art, um, art, um, Duolingo is on there, (coughs) which is, you know, a language, uh, a language app that our kids Mm -hmm. are, some of our kids are choosing to learn a language. So, um, oh, I have, (laughs) I've told the kids, I want them all to learn an instrument this year. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's kind of going to be kind of in, in between item. It's not going to be like, you have to do it in the morning, but, um, I want you to do it sometime during the day. Um, we haven't really, we haven't gotten into the instruments yet. I feel like we're so, we're so at the beginning of this year. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. we, a lot of these things are just in the, you know, talking the language. (laughs) We're just talking about it stage. Um, and making the, the actual plans. We're really coming. I feel like the first maybe month of us getting into routine is just kind of growing into all of this and figuring out, um, typing is on there. Um, writing a story, uh, sewing, getting outside. And these are all things, some of the things I, I do say, you know, like outside has to happen every day. Um, when you want to do it is, is fine. But like I, you need, you need to get outside. Um, woodworking, cooking and baking, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Legos, blocks, building, photography. I added, um, building a fort this week you know, and these, so they, those like the, and those are also, this is all just like suggested things that you can do in between your, your, uh, academics, but like, um, things that are really great for your brain, for your body Mm -hmm. and help you think. And so those are the things that's, that's actually what I see my kids probably doing the most during the day Mm -hmm. is those are those things. Mm -hmm. And then these, like the other things that gets checked off the list, those are, uh, usually shorter, you know, shorter mm-hmm. stints for, for our kids yeah. over here. <laughs> so you have a whiteboard with all that list of the <laughs> huge list of things yeah, and your I, kids uh... just on their own. And when they're in between their work, they're going to look at the whiteboard and thinking like, what do mm-hmm. I want to do right now? Yes. I'm going to pick one of these. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are all of your kids into that or is it just a f- no, couple? I mean, for sure. Okay. So my 13 year old is pro is like, I would say completely on her own she yeah she would she would look at that but I don't know that she'd um even (laughs) she's she's always uh you know and I'm I'm sure a lot I know a lot of you can relate to this because you've told me before like you have a child like this who you know acts older than she is and wants Mm -hmm. to be separate from kid the kid you know life (laughs) yeah yeah she's always been like that since she was like two years old right so She's always like <laughs> been above, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Like, you know anything. So um, you know she she probably does a lot of the stuff, but she just maybe mm. wouldn't say it comes from mm. this board. You know, like mm. she spends a lot of time. She has a um a hammock outside, and she mm. hangs out on that hammock a lot and mm. listens to audiobooks and podcasts for a lot of her. That's what she does a lot. Um, she does a lot of art, a lot of art. Mm. Um, and so. Like, uh, yeah, so if she does things on the list, it's just maybe not exactly, you know, what, what the other kids look like. For sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. So that's the routine for our day. And then, you know, and then in the afternoon, like, like you said, um, we maybe do more, uh, I, I give more, lots more freedom in the afternoon. So it's, um, a lot of times screens, um, or we'll go on an adventure. We'll do special, you know, we're still doing kind of special days. I know you and I talked about this during the pandemic. <laughs> We've had special days yeah. of the week. And so we maybe do something fun in the afternoon, mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. and, but I have to say full disclosure, here's my disclosure. We haven't done anything really together as a whole family either. And I know you've said that you're, you've kind of moved on from that mm. with your family. Yeah. And I think maybe we're at that point too, Angela, but I'm not ready to say we're at mm. that point yet. <laughs> Just yeah. cause I am mourning it. I, I yeah. miss that family time. Yeah. Um, the full family, like I used read to, aloud you know, and... yes, read aloud. And then it would like 
um, it would, you know, melt into something else together as a family and then something else. And that just does not happen anymore. Um, I've always, I still want to do history reading together. I have some Mm. books I want to read together. Um, CNN 10, we often like, I like to do that with the whole family, which Mm -hmm. is just, um, you know, it's on YouTube. It's geared towards probably middle grades, um, yeah. current events um deer time we haven't even gotten into that this year um and I really want to do that together as a family mm-hmm. but it's just mm-hmm. it's not naturally happening and so I need to figure out um you know number one is it worth it <laughs> and number two if it is how do we you know how do I make it work so everybody feels like on board with it yeah yeah I kind of decided I don't know when it was the summer or May I don't remember when it was Mm -hmm. um that if I didn't make things happen Mm -hmm. altogether Mm -hmm. it wasn't going to happen and I kind of just had to do it because it was important to me so um you know we would do we did read aloud at night and Mm -hmm. all of my kids Mm -hmm. said and I think I remember I think I talked about that this summer a lot um but also I want to talk to them about current events I want to talk to them about there's a book that we're reading. This book is anti-racist by Tiffany Jewell. Mm-hmm. And it's just like a jumping off point about, you know, systemic oppression. Yes. <laughs> and um, so we read a little bit of that. And then we have these great, I mean, it just always turns into this great discussion. Now that stuff is not going to happen organically. I know it's not. I mean, it does sometimes, but specifically using this book is not going to happen organically unless I say, hey, everybody, we're doing this right now. And so I've just learned as my kids have gotten older, I have to just do it. I have right. to just say, like, we're doing this. Hey, yeah. we're doing this tonight at seven or something yeah, because it's important yes. to me. Yep. And I think that's <laughs> valid. It, it is valid. I just can't do that all day long. No, I anymore. know. <laughs> I know. Not I that know. we ever yeah. could. I never yeah. could do it all day long. Yeah. Um, but, you know, my kids used to get really on board with that if I were like, this yeah, this is really important. Right. They were excited about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and now my kids are like, okay, we'll do it, mom. Thanks. You so know, or- I do, I do have to say though. Um, so I think maybe we should just do. You want to just dive into? Can I just talk about read aloud for a little bit? Yeah, let's okay. talk about that because the evolution of read aloud in our family. So like we, you know, we used to do read alouds all the time. It was the cornerstone of our homeschool for a mm-hmm. really long time. If you mm-hmm. listen to our pad- podcast from the beginning, you know, you've heard me talk mm-hmm. about how much I yeah. love read aloud, and I know that's not our, you know everybody's favorite I think everybody has their own strengths <laughs> this was like the one thing that I was clinging to <laughs> that I that I felt like I was good at and it was just a good fit for our family it's not anymore for our whole family but I have to say um read alouds are still happening in our family they look mm-hmm. a little different um so I'm reading aloud separately with each of my kids this takes up a lot of time yeah it does. and so it takes a commitment and I just mm-hmm. I feel like if if I'm going to do this, I'm going to really, I'm going to do it and and I'm going to be okay with like letting go of other things then Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it's so important to me and it is. So, um, well actually I should say I'm not really doing with my oldest child. Yeah. (laughs) She's doing audio books. Um, you know, we're doing, she's reading a novel a month with some friends Yep, doing book club. And, um, so she's doing that on her own and then also uh, listening to the book Stamped from the beginning. Um, and that's for, you know, for history. Mm-hmm. And um, so she's listening to that, too. So she's really kind of on her own. My two 11 year olds I'm reading. I'm reading with separately separate books. Mm, yeah. Um, that that might interest both of them. You know, they're. It, they're in they're you know they're twins but they're like very different people and so we're reading different yeah. books together and then my nine-year-old um I'm reading to her at bedtime yeah and that's her read aloud and she mm-hmm. it's just like she has a really hard time sitting still all day long especially mm-hmm. for read aloud and so that was a great uh change for her yeah so anyway so that's good yeah that's and awesome. then also I my plan is to do if I can get our kids all together this year is to read some poetry together. I really want to focus on some doing some poetry together as a family. And so I, I, okay, I will say I have gotten our kids together and maybe it's just over lunch (laughs) that I'll read some, some poems with them. My younger kids are still into all the kid poems I have Uh, here. Shel Silverstein, Chris Harris, Jack Pilitsky. Um, 
my oldest is not into those anymore. She can't even, she's like, I can't, I can't even be in the room when you read those mom anymore. You know, she's, what? she's moved Who on. She's a love shell silver scene. Come on. She, I think she's, she's needing to separate. Herself. She's needing to separate herself. Yes. Yeah. So I do have some poetry books. Um, poetry for young people is what they're called. And I have, mm. um, Robert Frost, Emily Dickinson, Maya Angelou, those kind of books. And so I'm reading some of those, but also I picked up some great poems, poetry books from the library. And mm. they're all um, I by people of color, mostly black people and mostly black women. And um, mm. that's really speaking to my 13-year-old language right now. That's awesome. Um, she's, she's loving those. And I've been reading a few of those, you know, whenever. Just to her. Just to her. To just okay. to her. So I guess I am doing a little read to her, but I feel it feels so little. It's so sporadic, but I feel yeah. like even just a little bit at a time, um, yeah. I feel like it really fills her, fills her bucket for sure. Yeah. And yeah. poetry is, <laughs> is, I mean, good poems. It's like, I feel like the best writing. <laughs> it's the yeah. best writing. It is. Um, and I've also wanted to um, do like a poetry study on songs too. For example, Mm. I've been talking about Beyonce's song, you know, Black Parade and just the Mm. the history and the meaning behind every single line in that song is, could be, um, you know, our history lesson for the year. Yeah. Lessons. It could fill up a whole year. So those are the things I'm, I'm looking forward to this year. That's awesome. I know I talked for a really long time. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I'll talk about read aloud a little bit. Um, read aloud has evolved in my house too. Yeah. I just have to preface this by saying my, you know, I don't love buying curriculum and I don't usually buy any slash much of it, mm-hmm. but, um, I do like buying books and I will just count that as my curriculum. And so this year I, and actually let me just back up and say, I don't usually buy books too mm-hmm. many. I buy some books, Yes, but because no. of limited library use and my kids getting older and needing, um, chapter more chapter books and those last longer you know and like you need longer to read those and maybe all of us can read them I decided to buy a bunch of chapter books and so that was my big curriculum purchase this year that's was buying a bunch (laughs) of chapter books so Mm -hmm. I went through and kind of made a list in my head based on I got some uh, I got a book list from the conscious kid because I'm on their patreon um, and then just right. other sources, friends, things I had read before, whatever. I came up with a list of about 20 books. And um, these are between like middle grade and YA um, chapter books. And I ordered them from bookshop.org because I'm trying to switch away from Amazon. I mm-hmm. talked about them last spring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the great thing about bookshop.org is, uh, first of all, great website, mm. it easy, easily mm-hmm. easy to order. And then also they donate money to independent bookstores. Yes. Part, part of your profits, um, part of their proceeds, I mean. And then also you can designate a specific independent bookstore. So if there's one in your town that you would like to support, usually they're on bookshop.org and all of the money can go to them. Yeah. Um, so that's what I've been doing. So and great. I <laughs> love that. So if you're interested in that book list, I did post it on Instagram, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Okay. So you could see all of the books that I purchased. But those books I use for all kinds of things like read aloud. Um, I'm reading them. My kids might be reading them independently. One or two of them. My kids are reading with their eyes and listening to the audio book. Sometimes it might just be inspiration like you're um, flipping through it and thinking I want to get that audio book. And I'm fine with that. So we just have those front and center. And some of them are more geared toward my 11-year-old. Some of them are more geared toward my 13-year-old. Some of them are both. You know, I'm going to try and read most of them. Um, Some of them my 13-year-old is doing in a book club with friends. Um, So we're just kind of using them throughout the year in many ways in our homeschool. Yeah. Yeah. I will attest that book list looked amazing. Yeah. I, yeah, I was kind of drooling over it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's exciting to get all the books right at, uh, right away too i know you know, know. because it's, um you could just buy them throughout the year as you read them or whatever but it's like to get them all right away yeah. at the beginning of the year and look at them and be like that is so I exciting <laughs> it's so exciting for me and, and for, my kid and for and kids for, the kids yeah yeah my kids are reading them it's like it's working so awesome. <laughs> um and then so i read aloud to my 11 year old every day um mm-hmm. 
but my 13 year old doesn't really want to do that with yeah, me yeah yeah which I'm okay with but she does a lot of audiobook listening and yeah. eye reading she does both yeah good so great yeah. um okay so another thing we're gonna we are going to be doing together and this is gonna be I think all of our kids are gonna do it maybe not at the same time like I said might not be working anymore um for uh for language arts we're gonna do kind of an, an um, more of an online thing um, through Logic of English, and it's just mm. online lessons. Um, I think they're short and simple. We haven't even started this yet, but yeah. we used to do lo- Logic of English. I did it not well on my own <laughs> teaching my kids um, because it's not my tr- my strong suit. This is my, you know, this is like not my favorite thing to teach. It's like the spelling, the um, the phonics, those kind of things, like the details yep. of how to yep. read and write, right? So yep. I this is not my favorite. So that this one online is kind of like, oh my gosh, it's like mind blowing to me because it's the stuff that I know my kids really need right now, but it's the stuff that I just don't want yeah. to teach. Yeah. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Can I talk about that for a minute? Yes, please do. Okay. Because we started that too this year. So if you've been around a while, you know, I've done logic of English for about five years. Much better than I have. I mean, just, yeah. Well, you just, well, we both went to the, we went to the training together, Mark. We did. Yeah. Yeah, Like five (laughs) years ago. And that's where we, we stayed in a hotel and we jumped up this podcast. Yeah. This is where, this is where it all began. Where where it began. Mm -hmm. Um, So we went to this training and I, since then, have been doing it with my kids. It's great for kids with um, learning disabilities. Um, it's I think it's an Orton Gillingham yes mm-hmm. uh, curriculum, but it is very detailed. But I have been inching my way along doing it with all the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I it's it's even good for me. I mm-hmm. I le- mm-hmm. it's interesting, right? It's it's um, interesting you things learn I've never things. learned. Yeah, yeah. I learn a lot. Yep. Um, but I had kind of decided maybe I was done. Mm. And then when the pandemic hit, um, the the creator of Logic of English, Denise Eide, she decided to put a lot of it online. Yeah. And she made these videos of herself teaching it. <laughs> and a lot of it is free on her website. Yeah. And so I am like, oh my gosh, this is, this is so amazing. I don't have to teach it. We can just watch a video of someone yeah, else doing yeah, it. Yeah. It's great. My kid, My son loves it too because... It's quick and easy. Yeah. And the, the great thing is there's a, yeah, like you said, there's a free version. It's light. Yeah. You know, they yep. call it Logic of English Light or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a paid version. So if you want to get into, go even deeper, you can buy this, you know, paid yes. version. But the light version is. It's exactly it what I wanted. Like enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's the spelling and the phonograms, which is yes. all I wanted anyway. And so she put it on her website for free, which I have the curriculum, so. You know, yeah, uh, I yes. could do it for free too. Yes. <laughs> but she's doing the work. And even the printables and, and stuff. <clears throat> like you can download yeah. the printables and everything. I know. Free. So yeah. the only thing is it's hard to find. We'll, we'll put a hard. link in the show notes. But you I've have to asked Google, you a couple times. I know. <laughs> you have to Google logic of English e-learning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you can see all the different stuff. So, But even then, <clears throat> you even have to tricky. click on a few things and it's you not. You have to create an account. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, yep. And then... Um, to go along with that, um, and by the way, I think all my kids are going to be doing that. 13, 11, yep. 11, and 9, and they're all yep. going to be doing that this year. And yep. because yep. that curriculum is so universal and you can pick up what you need, everybody can, yes. anybody can. Um, okay, so so we're going to do that. And I think that's going to be sparingly. Like once a week we'll do a video or something. Mm. So we're not going to mm-hmm. do, it's not going to, I'm not going to bombard my kids with that. Nobody super loves it at our house, but we're just mm-hmm. going to, you know do it sporadically. Um, also I do want to do some, just, I want to do more writing, just natural writing every day. Mm -hmm. Um, right now we're doing, you know, the kids, the younger three kids especially are doing Q and a a day, which is just a journal. They're just doing a journal and it's like a three year journal. So you can kind of look back and see what you, how you answered a question last year. And it's very interesting. And, um, fun for the kids to do. Um, but I'm just, I'm looking for ways to do this, you know, just do more natural writing every day. Um, we are doing, you know, Julie Brave writer, Julie Bogart's Brave Writer, um, some book clubs throughout the year. And so there are some writing things that go along with that. And I feel like those are nice and like doable and not, um, you know, you can take also just take what works for you in those kind of things. Like, um, 
there are so many resources in those book guides that you have to be really discerning in what's what's best, you know, what you can take in. Um, but also like, you know, now we have kids, we have friends, <laughs> um, in different parts of the country. And so we're hopefully going to be writing, you know, sending some letters, you know, my youngest, especially will be, you know, doing some writing that way. And I'm just trying to find like everyday writing that can just happen mm. joyfully without, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. without tears, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, know you I, mean? I have so, to say that's one of your strengths too. I've noticed you're really good at that writing. Yeah. Mm, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, At sparse, like putting it in throughout the day, like yeah. in small ways. It is. You know, it is. You're not intimidated by it. No. No, I like, I, I mean, writing is, can be used for so many good things and can be so fun. Yeah. It's very, very easy to make it not fun. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, it's like important to keep the fun in writing, to, yeah. to keep that fun. Um. I was going to say, oh, and my oldest is going to be taking a, a a Brave Writer class for the first time this year, which I'm so mm. excited about. Yeah, those are great. I feel like she is ready. 13, She's she is ready for like some intense, um, some more, you know, deep dives into, into writing yep. especially. So yep. I'm really That's excited awesome. about that. Yes, yes. Um, All let's right. see, what else? Um, I can talk a little bit yeah. about some stuff here Um, one thing that has changed this year for us Mm -hmm. is math Mm -hmm. um my both of my kids we we've done we've always done math but Mm -hmm. it has been um how do i say this we've switched curriculum Mm -hmm. a lot Mm -hmm. um we've done you know this app for a few months and then another app for a few months and so yeah it's been a lot of exploration. We've learned a lot of things, but it hasn't always tied together. We've played a lot of games. Um, and this year I decided we're going to kind of buckle down and mm-hmm. it might be time mm-hmm. to do some more serious math. <laughs> and yeah. so my eighth grader is taking a class through Mr. D Math. Yes. Um, it's pre-algebra. It's once a week. It's a live class, and then she does the homework on the other days. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm still I'm still helping her a little bit with the homework on the other days, but um, it's more of an anchor for her to watch this class. She feels independent. Um, she feels yeah. good that she's, you know, doing a real class. She feels accomplished. <laughs> yeah, she feels yeah. accomplished, yeah. and so we're doing that for her. And my sixth grader is doing. Um, He has a math tutor. We found a math Mm -hmm. tutor Mm -hmm. who he's working with once a week, similar, um, similar to his sister once a week. And, um, I am then doing homework with him on the other days. Nice. And we found the tutor through out school. So somebody, a lot of you recommended this to me when I was asking, but, um, you can go into out school and search for a tutor and there's teachers who, um, you know, offer are offering up their services for different grades and subjects and whatever. So I just messaged a few and that's why I found this teacher. Um, and she wants to, she likes sex and math. And so I never knew what sex, I've never tried sex and math or anything, but I bought the book and that's what he's doing. (laughs) So, so, um, what, why we're doing that is because I could do it with him. I used to teach middle school math too, Yeah, (laughs) but he, uh, you know, when you have another teacher who you're accountable to, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's just, it's easier for him to not get silly or complain or things right. like and that. I just have to say, it's sometimes this, that dynamic is just, it's better to, it's better. It's better. And that does not mean, I think a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of times what happens is when that happens, when there's like some frustration between teaching and, you know, learning with your, with your kids, parent. Mm-hmm. between parent and kids that we think, well, I'm just, I can't do this homeschooling thing. This is too hard or whatever, but it's really, it's okay to not take on everything as the homeschool parent and for sure rock your strengths. We talk about that a lot. Yep. And, and, you know, let somebody else who's great at this do it. Yep. (laughs) For sure. I know. Make it a pleasant um, experience. Yep. I'm, I'm fine with outsourcing. Absolutely. (laughs) Yes. I'm I'm becoming more and more, especially as my kids get older too. Yeah. And I think this year too, because. (laughs) Yeah, this year we're not doing many outside classes mm-hmm. or, you know. Exactly. I yes. just thought, well, this is the time. Well, and I just, I do, do think, and maybe 
I don't think this is just my kids. I mean, I think this, I'm seeing it in my kids, but I think this is maybe a kind of a universal thing that as our kids get older, they really do want um, some outside, yeah. you know, mentors, teachers, people, other, you know, they need that. They need more kind of outside things besides yeah, just for their sure. mom, whatever. Mom for sure. Dad, whatever. So, um, yeah, for math, we're kind of, we're kind of, kind of in the same boat in that we've you know tried lots of different things over the years um recently and when I say recently I mean like last spring we started doing Dreambox, which is an app um and it's uh worked for our my 11 year olds they're both Mm. doing really well at Dreambox and learning so much but I Mm. do have to say they are they need help doing their lessons. So yeah. I am sitting right next to them with a whiteboard and a marker. Yeah. And like, yeah. we're both like writing things out. And mm-hmm. they also have, <laughs> just full disclosure, my 11 year olds still are using like a multiplication chart. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. to do the hard problems that they have to do, you know, just that the multiplication is just not there. Like they're not doing multiplication super fast right now yet. So they're getting there. But, um, to have that, I I don't think that's cheating. I think a lot of, (laughs) I think, no, it's not cheating. My 11 year old is the same. He carries that around. He carries it around. Yeah. So like, and I just think (laughs) that is every time they look at it, I just think they're learning every time they look at that multiplication Mm. sheet. I'm like, they're learning their multiplication facts. It's because because so they're right. having more and more experience with the multiplication chart. So they're yep. using that to do these harder problems. So anyway, so we're I'm with each of them every time. My yeah. nine year old is also, I have to say, started just started on Dreambox. Um, but she uh, she just told me yesterday, this is I don't I don't love this. And I can see mm. it. I understand. And so I think with her, um, I think we're going to just do some more we're gonna like take it down a notch a little bit for her Mm. and so Mm -hmm. we're gonna do more math games really we just we need to work on you know lots of the you know basic facts and then also I've had these books the life of Fred I know some of you have Mm. have used those before and I I think I've tried them a few times with my older kids and it didn't go but I kind of have this feeling it's gonna work for my nine-year-old just like Mm. sitting down reading a story talking about how to solve a math problem um, and I think that might be the way to go for this year. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, we're also, I have this book um, called Family Math, um, which actually my mom had when she was a teacher <laughs> yeah. years ago. So it's been Classic. around a long time. <laughs> but the the games in there are so good. They're so mm. good and mm. pretty simple. And yeah. so I think we're going to do more game uh, game schooling math with her this year. Yeah. And we yeah. may, we may do go into some apps. We may do, um, you know, we, we did, we may do Dreambox a little bit. I don't know. Or, um, what's the one? Oh gosh. Now I can't remember the app that we've Prodigy? been. Prodigy. Prodigy. Yeah. Um, that might be, and I, I like Prodigy for, um, just, you know, just, uh, some practice here and there. We've used Fun that as a re- practice. Games. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, so that's where we're at with math. And then our oldest is also doing this Mr. D math. Um, yes, my, he, our girls are doing it yes, together. Yes, they're doing it together. Yeah. So once a week for the whole year, it's like a whole year class. It's a commitment. It's a commitment. But I, <laughs> but I liked that it was once a week. And then also yep. like it's mostly independent, especially my yep. daughter is just like, I got it. <laughs> she's yeah she's real into the independence of it she loves that um it's her own thing so yep that's great mm-hmm. um, um yeah maybe it, i might just fill in mm-hmm. here yeah. on some things that we Please haven't talked do. about yet if that's okay okay yeah so um let's see my 11 year old is um working on handwriting and typing he has um some uh learning differences. Mm-hmm. And so that's real important for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he does a lot of audiobook listening. Um, and so he's doing that. Um, he is also, this is like, this is the main thing he's doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I can't believe it's taken me this long to say it. He loves writing. <laughs> oh, yeah, He yes. loves writing. 
Okay, and he's discovered this in the last six months. Angela, he's when I was talking been... about writing, I should have mentioned you're the one who's doing this right now. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Yeah, I all I he I'm not I'm not a writer. His dad's not a writer. I mean, like we we can, but we're not like. He has always had stories in his head. Yes. He's always been very b- verbal, right? Yes. The physical act of writing is almost impossible. But he's mm-hmm. got these mm-hmm. stories and these ideas. Mm-hmm. And so um, last spring, you know, I set him up with a t- type uh, talk to text. Yes. And, um, you know, we had done writing before that, but I really encouraged um, him to do it daily and he's really gotten into it and he's writing books um, we just we just printed his newest book which is like 60 pages long oh my gosh I, yeah and hopefully we're gonna get it soon in the mail he is like he is so into writing and it is really good too it's really good <gasps> he writes way better than I could ever oh, write he's so descriptive gosh. You know, but he's he's talking into the computer and it's typing it out Mm -hmm. now Mm -hmm. um, that he's doing that, you know, every day. He does it on the weekends, too. Wow. So then. So what's great is like he wasn't so into editing the first few books. Right. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, he realized after you try and read them that, you know, you really need some good editing. And so then he the next time he wrote a book, he was like, Mom, I really want you to help me with editing. And so he does some of the editing on his own after it, it, like the computer types it in. Yeah. He'll go back and fix and add periods and capitals and stuff like that. Wow. And then also I will sit with him and re go through it. And I'm just like, this is, <laughs> this is better than any curriculum. Like he's learning uh, all of the yeah. mechanics <laughs> of writing too. <laughs> because he wants to. Because uh, he wants to. That is. Because he wants people to be able to read it. It's priceless. He Priceless. I know it's so great and so um, I'm not even doing like well like I said he's doing the logic of English for like spelling and stuff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I'm not doing a different like writing curriculum I'm not going to have him do like a writing class I'm mm-hmm. not going to like push it on him in other ways because I just I really want him to keep going with us yes and to love it yes yes so oh my goodness. okay so that um Yeah, that's about what he's doing. I mean, so he's basically doing writing, read aloud, some logic of English lessons, handwriting, and math. And like I said, we're still doing like together, we're doing maybe a documentary a week. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a lot of current events. I might add some more like, I don't know, here and there, sciencey or history kind of stuff. Okay. Um, Uh, So my question, I have a couple questions for you. Do you do all those things that you just mentioned for him? Is he yeah. doing those every day? All of those things. Yeah, and that's the way he wants it. And that's the way he wants like, it. He wants to do a little bit of everything every day. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And he because I know in the past time. it hasn't yep. always been like that. No, it hasn't. Right. No, 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 no. It hasn't. But he wants to check off his things. Yeah. He and I have a shared note. Yes. Um, in the notes app, and he um will check off his things, and that's the way he wants to do it. He wants to do it and check it off, and he wants all these things every day. So um, it doesn't take him long. It takes him you know, an hour or two or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that um, is so amazing. Yeah, and, and he has lots of breaks in between too. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, he does meditation. We okay, go for good. a walk. Yeah, so he has breaks. And then in the afternoon, we do deer. He does screens. We maybe go outside, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So great. Um, so I was going to say for... um. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I know you were talking about um, how science and, oh, science and social studies are not like necessary. And I totally agree with that until, you know, until you're in high school and you're ready to like kind of um, yeah. learn these, you know, big concepts or whatever. But I I will say we are going to, we're going to, we're taking your suggestion about the documentary series. Was it, is it a documentary series? 1491? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got, I got a subscription to that. You did. It was yes. only $5. Though, yeah. For a little Such while. Such a good. Yeah. And like I said, our, my 13 year old is reading Stamped. Yes. From the beginning. Um, we're also, I'm pulling out two books. I don't know how much we're going to read of these, but um, Howard's in um, History of the United States. 
Yes. A young that, people's history? Uh, yes. Sorry. Yes. Because yep. there are two <laughs> versions. So it's the young yeah, per- The young yes. one. Yeah. Yeah. I like the young one. But even that is a lot. It's, <laughs> it's a lot. So it's dense. Lot. So like yeah. I will read maybe like a page. Yeah. At a time. And I did that for two years. I read one page every couple of days for a few years. For it's two years a lot. <laughs> yeah. To get through that book. Um, and yeah. then also we ha- I have this book called the This Land is Our Land. And it's uh, stories about immigrants. Yes. Um, and so that I'm going to pull out too. But I have to just say just like little tiny things, just small amounts of this kind of stuff. Yep. Very, very yep. small. Yep. Um, yep. Um, and then I have to say for science, <laughs> we for years my science curriculum has been a vinegar, a baking soda, water, and <laughs> big balls. I mean, I'm not kidding you. Maybe some food coloring. I mean, there's... It's been very basic. And slime, 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 um, slime has been ingredients. huge. Yes, <laughs> all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, oh, and then, uh, but also, um, even just this week, just just yesterday, you know, my son, my eleven year old son, who gets up at the crack of dawn every morning. He's he's such an early riser. Everyone else likes to sleep in, but he gets up super early. So he and I go for a walk every morning, a short walk. It is it's short. But it's through like a little path through the woods and we picked up and this is just like all natural learning that happens. It's not something I planned, but we just picked up a few pe- a few leaves because they've been falling here in Minnesota and we picked them up. We brought them home, grabbed the um, our nature anatomy book. Mm. Nature anatomy has been like kind of my go to nature book for learning anything really. <laughs> um yep. and it's by julia rothman but she, so we just put i i put these leaves out on a table opened the book to the leaf page and we just like i had everybody go look at those during the day and identify mm-hmm. the leaves and we could just yeah. talk about them and you know yeah so that was what we did and i think that kind of That's stuff nice. is what like is like my main <laughs> science science lessons <laughs> yeah that's great uh-huh yeah I think um, discovery do, is great. Yes, we do have some, a few. Okay, so there's the science kit, like a subscription service called Mal Science, and we mm-hmm. did it a long time ago. I still have some of those, so I'm yep. planning on using those probably throughout the fall. Um, yes. And those are, I have to be honest, very similar to things. I mean, it's a lot of baking soda and vinegar. <laughs> and you know there are some other things that you can use in those they, that they supply but yeah I just don't want to discount the simple things that you can do at mm-hmm. home every day that mm-hmm. you don't even have to teach you can just let your kids kind of go for it and they learn a lot yeah so yes yeah so I have to say too to um, talk about science a little bit yeah. my 13 year old um is going to also we also have male science Mm -hmm. that my 15 year old love i mean Mm. my 15 year old super into chemistry these are chemistry type experiments so my 15 year old had been we'd been getting them for her she loved doing them but each each box comes with two um like two different people can do the the experiment so my 15 year old did it but there's still enough stuff for somebody else to do it so we've saved all of the male science kits um, and my 13 year old is going to do that probably later this year. Mm-hmm. First of all, she wanted to do this um, class through the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Ooh. They um, are providing free class, a couple <gasps> free classes. Nice. And this one is called Teens Can Make a Difference. Um, and it's about like ocean con- conservation. Oh, my gosh. And she's really into it. It's very short. It's she's like, Mom, this is not going to take me very long. It's probably going to take her two to three weeks, maybe, of just watching a couple videos and thinking about a couple questions and stuff like that. So um, that sounds amazing. That sounds I like know. the perfect amount. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and so when she's done with that, maybe we'll try and find another something mm-hmm. short mm-hmm. and fun. Maybe she'll do male science. I don't know, um, yes. but I'm not worrying about it. Like I said before, I'm not worrying about it. Right. Um, Good. She okay. She's also, my 13-year-old is also reading Stamped. We started that last year, but she's doing it in a book club with um, your daughter and yes. another friend. Yes. Um, and so they're do- taking it slow. They're doing one, chap- one chapter a week, mm-hmm. and they're short chapters. Yep, yep. Um, and then they're going to meet every two weeks and discuss. And so um, that is a great history book. It's the History of Racism in America yeah. by Ibram X. Kendi and Jason Reynolds. It's for youth. But I was listening to it too, and it's 
again. Like, yeah, it's good it's, for me too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'm learning a lot. Yep. Um, my 13 year old also does CNN 10 every day. Mm. Um, does she just do it on her own? She does. Yeah. She just watches okay. it on her own. That's good. I'm not, I don't really want to, my 11 year old, we have watched it before, but I'm also kind of aware of his intake of like news. Sure. I, I don't want, I don't want him to get that much. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. He's a little bit anxious. And so yeah, I'm trying I to shield him a little bit. Definitely. I think every kid is so different in that area too. I think it's really, it really does take some wisdom to decide. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm just going to keep going on some things that I didn't talk about yet about with my 13 year old. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely. She is doing a writing class throughout school. Mm-hmm. It's once a week for a half an hour and they are doing short little like how to write a paragraph or how to answer a question or um, how to construct a response to something. Mm. It seems very practical, things that you might use every day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because it's short, she's into that. And I'm cool. into that too. That's great. Yep. Um, she is doing a um, language. It's called Daily Language. It's called Daily Language Review. And I think it's mm-hmm. like, oh, gosh. I should have, I, I will put it in the show notes, but I got it on Amazon. Great. It's just like every day, yeah. a little yeah. correct the sentence, um, but it does like mechanical stuff and she just does a teeny bit every day. Great. Um, she's also, and then the last thing she's doing, well, she's doing typing and then she's also doing an art class once a week mm-hmm. um, throughout school too. So nice and like i said she's doing everything independently and she like kind of like you were talking about she wants the weekly like or Mm. she wants the bigger picture what do i need to do or like what am i doing what am i interested in and then she makes herself a daily schedule oh good um that she follows for herself and i don't even like on a notebook or a planner yeah she takes out a notebook paper every day okay and she writes down her entire schedule so great so great those life skills Oh, and also one more it's thing. Amazing. I yeah. know this is getting long, but I know you guys want to hear all this stuff. So <laughs> she is, wait, my kids are both doing chores that are, all three, that are supervised by my husband, which I'm so glad I it's outsourced so that to him <laughs> a while ago. But my 13 year old, in addition, does a lot of work around the house for money. She does some serious mm-hmm. cleaning mm-hmm. and chores for me. And she wants to make that money. Yeah. Um, that is what she does. For a good chunk of her day. Yeah. That's and amazing. Because she wants to. <laughs> She's so motivated. She's motivated. She, she has does things a good job. that she wants and she needs money for it. I think, yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> I mean, I think that's, that is so great. You gotta uh, just jump win-win. on that opportunity. Yeah. And she's learning how to manage money, which I think yes, is great. Yes. Um, so she's also learning how to online shop. Which <laughs> <laughs> it's a skill. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it's a definitely a life skill. I mm-hmm. I am a little like, it's just her particular personality yes. and skills all like converging into this one thing. Yeah. I don't know if like ev- my other two kids would not be into this. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. it's funny because um, I was I was thinking about that the other day because I've been trying to get my kids to clean the dish or sorry to clean the. Fri- refrigerator out like take everything out and like do a deep clean of the oh, refrigerator yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and I've been offering money like I am <laughs> offering you cash money for this and nobody's taking me up on it nobody and then uh finally somebody my youngest my nine-year-old mm-hmm. asked me for money for Ro- Roblox mm. Robux Robux okay and I said oh you could clean out the <laughs> clean out the fridge <laughs> Did she take and you she up? Did. On it? She did. She did. She cleaned. Did she do it well? by herself? Cleaned wow. the whole fridge out. <laughs> she was so, so motivated awesome. to get that for those you. robux. I mean, it was. She wanted it bad. That is so, a big job. I feel like that needs to be done once a week in our house. Oh, it's my not. Goodness. Doesn't get done once a week. No, but it could be. <laughs> well, this is the first time this has happened since we've moved into our house. That was yeah. the end of May. So yeah. Ooh, yeah. it was. It was bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she had a big job. But I can't yeah, believe well. it. I mean, and that's, I mean, the motivation of, you know, what, like, it was, I couldn't have, I couldn't have thought of something to motivate her, but she thought of like robot, you know, she wanted yeah. this robot. So yeah, great. If you that's just kind of had to wait, you had to wait till someone asked you for something. Yes. 
<laughs> exactly. But then I, f- I feel like, you know, like my other kids, <laughs> they They'd haven't, like, yeah, there's nothing so they've really wanted that bad, <laughs> that well, bad. <laughs> I'll go make a lemonade stand. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> I don't really need all the clothes anymore. Or, you know, the, they'd be like, no, thanks. That's fine. So, yeah, you just want to jump on those, the big motivation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you wanted oh, to talk about? I don't think so. I mean, there's okay. always so much. We could keep talking about this forever, and maybe we will in Patreon in um in our in our Facebook squad group for sure. Yeah. So yeah, there's always more to talk about. All right. Let's move on to our loving this week. <clears throat> All right. Yes. Lauren, what's what are you loving this week? Well, this is something that you have been raving about, and I've been putting All right. off. All right. <laughs> um, it is a puzzle. Okay. <laughs> the Charlie wow. Harper puzzle. Oh, yes. Yes. Love Charlie Harper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? Now, hold up. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like puzzles. I don't. I don't <laughs> love puzzles. I really don't. Um, But there were a couple of things that made me love this puzzle. Number one. Oh, gosh. It's about nature. It has naturey things in it. I know. Which I love. I know. The artwork is I know. absolutely beautiful. I know. On these puzzles. And then also... What I love probably the most is the colors are easy. They're easy. Mm. It's a puzzle that I can easily do because yeah. of the the distinguishable colors in it. Yes. Is that what it is? I I don't know. They're like distinctive shapes and colors. So yeah. I don't have to think. There's not like mm. 500 gray, grayish yes. white pieces. <laughs> or, yes. you know, it's not yeah, like I that. I know what you mean. Yeah. So they're very, it's very distinguishable colors and it's so we can, it's like doable for me. (laughs) Okay. So do you have a puzzle table? No. No. Although now that we've done this one, we did it on the dining room table. I was thinking. And there's nobody ate there for a while. No. Nobody ate there. (laughs) And I was thinking now where are we going to do puzzles all winter? Mm -hmm. We got to have one. I know. I, I have Googled puzzle tables up and down. I <laughs> Well, you know, I, we're still filling our house with furniture. We yeah. haven't yet. And so I need, I do need some coffee tables. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking just, I might get a big square coffee table. Yeah. That's big enough to do a puzzle on it. Yeah. I've, I'm using my card table in mm-hmm. the middle of the living room. Yeah. And it's, I like it because I can do, put it away. It's so like I can put yes. it up for a few months, put it away. But it's a card table. I know. <laughs> so, it's not the prettiest, but that's it's okay. Fine. It's okay. I, I would take like a pretty card table or nice sturdy card table. Yeah. That's kind of what I want. And well, I, I bet you could get one of those. Yeah. So okay, I have to know mm-hmm. which which ones did you get? I just got one, and it's see, the secret sanctuary. Okay. And it has a big uh, uh, blue heron in the front. Oh yeah, yeah. I have that one. Um, and it's 500 pieces. 500 pieces is yeah. the perfect amount. It's the perfect amount. You yeah. know, because once we got into it, and this wasn't just me. This was, first I did it with my 11-year-old son who I knew would love, would love it. Yeah. You can and listen so, to an audiobook and do a puzzle. Yes. It's like the best activity. Yes, yes, yes. And I needed to read, listen, I'm reading Lord of the Rings to him. So... <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So he, he's been, he's also been read while I'm reading. He, he did a little bit of it on his own. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was a good p- thing for just the two of us to do, but mm-hmm. then everyone else was really interested mm-hmm. in what mm-hmm. we were doing over there and kind of got into it. And I thought this is, uh, I don't know. I feel like this is mark this day in history because when my kids were younger, Nobody liked to do puzzles. Nobody wanted to do puzzles. There was no interest ever. And I thought, I guess we're just not a puzzle family. It's okay. I'm not that into puzzles either. So I just yeah. thought, we're just going to, I'm going to move on to other things we like. Yeah. I think, I think some of us are becoming puzzle people. I'm not I saying I am, be, but maybe. It might be Charlie Harper puzzles too. I think Because I'm is. a puzzle person when it comes to those puzzles, <laughs> but I really can't get into other puzzles <laughs> that much. Yeah. You know, like my family, like my parents and siblings, when we all get together, which we haven't, you know, for a while, but like when we, when we get together, there's always a puzzle going and okay. I'm usually on the outside watching them and, and like <laughs> cheering them on, like, good job, everybody on the puzzle that you're doing because I don't, I just don't have the patience. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, but I it's it. and it's usually like a one thousand piece, and it's very yeah. you know like yeah very hard. I look so hard. <laughs> so anyway, these are perfect for the so people your next who are one. Not super <clears throat> puzzle. Get the other f- Charlie Harper five hundred piece. Oh, there's is only there... like one or two other. Oh, really? There's one other. It's got a bunch of different animals. Okay. Little teeny animals oh. all around the whole. Oh yeah, I think I see it right now. What's it called? Tree of Life. Yes, Tree of mm-hmm. Life. I'm missing two pieces in that one. Oh. And I have I've done it so many times and I'm like, should I just get a new one? Because <laughs> I hate that I'm missing two pieces. They're so pretty. But I've They're said so no, pretty. I can't. Yeah, I know. It's <clears> tough. <throat> it's so tough. Yeah. All right, Angela, what are you loving this week? Well, if you follow me on Instagram, you have probably seen this book. It's called Punching the Air mm-hmm. by Evie Zaboy and Yusuf Salam. This book Yusuf just Zaboy. released a couple, couple weeks ago. So I had pre-ordered it. Um, love E.B. Zaboy. Yes, We've me too. We've read her other books. Um, yes. American Street. American Street. Pride. Oh, Pride um, was my favorite. Oh, yeah. My favorite. Uh, so she's a really great author. Um, and Yusuf Salam is one of the exonerated five mm. from the um, yes. Central Park yes. five, five case. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and so this is this book is right oh up my gosh. alley. Because it first of all, it's a YA in verse. <laughs> oh my I gosh. Love novels in verse. Because nope. I'm I unlike you, I'm not that into poetry. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I'm I think intuitive people like poetry better than mm-hmm, censors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm a censor. Mm-hmm. I sometimes don't get it, right? Yeah. Like tell me what's really going on. <laughs> <laughs> but novels in verse, they tell a story. And I get it. Like I, I can get it. So it's pretty perfect. concrete. Yes, yeah. I think they are poems. Just they yes. are. Yes, they are. With but a they're line with a storyline. With the storyline, and so story I can understand it. And I also like it because it's shorter. So mm-hmm. it looks like a big thick book, mm-hmm. but you get through it quicker because mm-hmm. there's not that many words on a page, right? Right. And the chapters are short. Like each chapter is a page or two, and yes. so you can like pick it up, read a chapter or two, put it back. Right. So that's why I love novels in verse. If you haven't read one, you should. Um, but so that's one reason I love this. But also it is a story about a boy who is a black boy who is in prison for something, you know, he didn't do or he had a small part in. He shouldn't okay, be in prison. Okay. He's, he's awaiting it's his, not it's not Yusuf's it's story. not Yusuf's story okay. but obviously his yeah. story informed mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. so this boy in the story has a different you know circumstances and this boy is an artist and mm-hmm. you know he's really angry that he's you know locked up and he also um is just figuring out how to deal with his emotions through art and it is just mm. it's beautiful it is beautiful it's awesome so I highly recommend it <sighs> Are you recommend. finished? Have you read I'm it? I finished. Oh, mm-hmm. good. I finished That's it. It's awesome. It's great. It's on my I list. It. Yep. All right. Oh. All right. I think we did it. We did it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening. If you want to find us on social media, we'd love to have you there. We're on Facebook and Instagram at Homeschool Unrefined. Um, we have our website, homeschoolunrefined.com, where you can find links to everything that we talked about. There'll be a lot of links this week, so mm-hmm. you can find them on the website. <laughs> Um, there'll be show notes or in your podcast app you should just be able to scroll down and see all the links and we'll see you next week thanks for listening homeschool unrefined is created and produced by marin gorse and angela sizer amanda ginn is our content and marketing strategist this podcast is listener supported we have been and are happy to be personally investing in this business we believe in but we also know we deserve to have a business that invests in itself When we reach 200 patrons, we'll have enough to cover our costs and the many projects we are dreaming of. Join our growing community at patreon.com slash homeschoolunrefined. Additionally, we are donating 10% of all Patreon income and product sales to The Conscious Kid, a black and brown led organization that has been instrumental in our own evolution and in leading the way in both ideological and tangible change with their work in parenting and education through a critical race lens. No matter how you homeschool, you are exactly who your kids need. You're doing great. 